Hello, my name is Dante Rene, and welcome to the 10 Room Bizarro YouTube page where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more. Like tonight's gem, this is 1985's The Oracle. 1985's The Oracle, directed and edited by Miss Roberta Findlay. Now, you know from this YouTube page that I've looked at other Roberta Findlay films, such as Lurkers, such as A Woman's Torment, and there will be many more to come. Uh, she is a fascinating director, and she also edited this film, and is a fascinating person as well, just to hear her speak. I also looked at another one of her films in this page. I, I'm just thinking uh, The Tenement. Uh, Roberta Findlay, female director in the horror, exploitation, and... Um, and erotic, hardcore, X-rated genres. Very, very unique voice in the cinematic industry. The Oracle is such a special experience in cinema, and it is something that needs to be looked at. It's something that people need to mention more, and I don't hear anything about it. It says on the front poster here, from Roberta Finley, cult director of Snuff, The Oracle, a power that is ancient. Jennifer was desired, then seduced. Now the horror begins. Look at that awesome poster art. This was put out uh, by Shriek Show uh, Entertainment. Here is the back of the uh, DVD here. Horrible glare. There you go. Get a couple interesting images from the film. The Oracle 1985. Let's get into this fascinating film here. Um, this is a movie experience that is so unique and so creative that it takes the horror genre and it mixes it into, um, first it breaks down the horror genre into the, the different subgenres all within the same film. We have slasher, bit of murder and mystery. Creatures, the occult, and when I say creatures, monsters even. The occult, the supernatural, the psychological. It's all in here. Not only that, we get a dose of grindhouse horror as well. Real 42nd Street sleazy horror, a la maniac horror with Joe Spinell. That vibe. How do you mix all these things together? We are residing within the streets of New York City. We see Jersey license plates in this film. But it says in the closing credits, filmed entirely in New York City. We see 42nd Street, Red Light District. And the uh, porno theaters and, 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 and strip shows. Live nude girls. We're in... Uh, Apartments at New York, uh, in New York, apartment complexes, the, the, uh, the apartment horror. It reminded me of the apartments in Lurkers, her other film, which I looked at on this YouTube page. And we go from those apartments and we travel to offices and the basement of an apartment. And we celebrate Christmas in this film, and we also celebrate New Year's Eve in this film. Yes, uh, this is a Christmas vibe to this film and also a New Year's Eve vibe to this film. We also see snowy streets in, in New York, people's breath in the air. It's cold. It's definitely cold in this film. It's a real deal. Um, we travel to a mental hospital. We go to a creepy, almost funhouse-like museum of, of, uh, of anthropological artifacts of maybe voodoo or, or, or tribal peoples. And the tickets are only $2 to that museum. And we, 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 we go to a New Year's Eve party. And we enter... The, the, the murderous elements on the porch of this party and in the kitchen of this party. And the horror of the bedroom in the apartment and late night television. 
nightmares, dreams, psychosis, the psychological meeting the occult, the psychological versus the supernatural, supernatural delusions, tiny, splattery, gooey little creatures with big mouths a la deadly spawn, an old man's carcass come to life, a skeleton head flying, prostitution, mental patients, a sexually ambiguous murderer with a man's voice, altered man's voice, but a woman's body, possibly, possibly transgender, but noted to be a psychotic pervert, I believe, in the film with the exact, with the, were the exact words. A portion of this film was filmed at the Magical Child Shop an actual, we actually go into an occult bookstore, and it was called The Magical Child Shop. It's, it, it's, it's um, credited in the closing credits of this film, and if you look it up, it's been permanently closed, but it was run by someone with, by the name of Herman Slater, who was a high Wiccan priest, supposedly, who went to, to witchcraft and things like this, and he opened up this store, and he had other stores, and he died of AIDS in 1992, supposedly. So a little bit of history in, we also enter into this kind of occult bookstore in here as well. Um, we have mediums and we have possession and visions and pain and loneliness and relational torment within the marriage, within a marriage. And which reminded me a bit of Roberta Finley's uh, uh, dealings with marital relationships in a woman's torment as well, which I also looked at on this YouTube page. We have vicious murders in here, blood, uh, gore, gory, special effects, the real deal, blood, no flinching away from it, uh, continual stabbings, decapitation. Um, destruction of the human body, the, the head eaten away, crushed, possible mysterious suicide, or is it? And then uh, other tormented marriage relationships in this film as well, where a woman just gets skeeved out by her husband, even touching her. This is the world of Roberta Finley's The Oracle. This is the world of this extremely complicated film and a creative and unique film. Um, mixing all of those subgenres of, of horror is a very, very unique thing and something that I have not quite seen before like this. You know, the editing of this film is very interesting as well as we have some very quick flash strobe-like editing. We are seeing things happening simultaneously in different locations. And as we're watching this film at first, we really can't m quite make sense of how these things relate, of how these multiple stories within this film relate to each other, the, how these characters would ever possibly relate to each other, how the, how the occult and the supernatural and the mediums, how they would ever relate to a slasher film, how they would ever relate to grindhouse sleazy horror, how would they ever relate to that, and that and that they do. Um, this is a film that utilizes neon lighting, in particular neon green lighting, and some very spooky, creepy, scary situations 
And when I say situations, I really mean atmospheric situations in this film. Weird, bizarre. They're, those, those words are always kind of thrown out, you know? But the mixing of the subgenres of horror in this film bring the weird and bring the bizarre. And we really do have themes of, in a way, I'm, I'm, I'm using the title of another Roberta Finley film, but I'm saying in this film, this film really is the story of a woman's torment of the lead character and not being understood and lonely and demands within her marriage, within her marital bed, demands from her husband, demands from her friends, demands from her counselor, demands from her doctor. She's alone in the world. And yet, she has found the most intimate of presences and friends in this film, in the most unlikely and violent of places. The music in this film is that 80s synthesized, orchestrated horror. It almost reminded me a little bit of the of the of the way the the the, the synth orchestra sounds in maybe um, lots of other eighties horror films, but like um, um, *Sorority House Massacre* Part Two, Part Two. I think it was also called uh, *AK Nighty Nightmare*. Um, but it had that those, those types of sounds, and uh, we also had these very creepy, dark haunted house-like soundscapes in this film, and also disturbing, low-end synth sounds in this film that could be oppressive and, and, um, and very, very oppressive and off-putting. Very dark. The score in this film is very dark. We also have a boombox playing in, in one part of the film with kind of like some some real kind of uh, 70s exploitation sound and music with some real strong hand percussion. We also have a New Year's Eve party that has uh, some kind of a disco sounding uh, music in there. We also have um, uh, a Christmas party with some acoustic guitar work uh, in the film. We have a, a very interesting landlord in the film with, um, excuse me, he almost looked like Tom Savini to me, and his one eye, something was wrong with his one eye. And there was something very interesting about... Um, <clears throat> this landlord in his relationship to the to the to the girl that lived in his apartment complex it's complicated it's interesting at first you think it's going to go somewhere that you think it's going to go but it doesn't it it goes someplace else um and there's vicious brutality in the gore and in the violence and in, in, in some of the scenes in this film <clears throat> and <clears throat> this is a film that, as I stated previously, has the theme of um, psychology versus the supernatural. Definitely something uh, happening here in this particular film. This is 1985's The Oracle, A Power That Is Ancient, by Roberta Finley. Wow. This is, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it's unlike anything, you know, you, you've probably seen before. And it needs to be talked about more. Thank you so much for watching the Ten Room Bizarro YouTube page, where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more, like Roberta Finley's 1985's The Oracle. Thank you so much, and good night.